here shipped directly from Louisiana is our entree for Gauntly Thanksgiving number eight. You're always supposed to cut with knives away from you, but Gauntly is cool and doesn't follow the rules. This is our eighth monstrous meal we'll be preparing for a group of folks tomorrow to show our thanks that they're part of the show, that they've stuck with us this long, and I thank you for that too. And so for this eighth Thanksgiving special, which may just be our final such outing, I have prepared a very special meal item. It has come to us straight from the swamps of Louisiana. It is an entire alligator because Gauntly goes the extra mile for you. I've melted up a big pat of goat butter here into this bowl. Uh, goat butter is a little softer on the stomach. Sometimes even the undead have to worry about that. And I'm going to use this as the base for an injection sauce that we're going to take a big old horror movie syringe and stab into our gator at opportune places throughout to get it really saturated with some good, greasy, savory greatness. To this butter, I'm going to add some spices befitting the bayou. I'm going to add a heaping helping of Cajun seasoning. Shake that all up in there, like that. Big helping, so it gets nice and dark red and fills the air with the taste of Cajun spices. Then we're going to add a big pinch of garlic salt. One more, one more pinch. Because we are also going to add another garlic based ingredient. This is the creamy roasted garlic sauce. So creamy roasted garlic sauce that in the mix too. Then maybe you want to add a bit of kick. You're going to toss in some hot sauce. If you want it real spicy, you might add a lot of this stuff. I'm just going to add a bit like that. Then finally, we want to add the juice of one lemon to our injection concoction. So I'll just squeeze that in there real nice. You can get special lemon juicing devices, big hand presses specifically for getting every last bit out of there. But this is another thing that's to taste. And personally, I found it tasteless to charge 1150 for something that presses a lemon, but your mileage may vary. I've got some paper cuts and I'm finding every one of them right now as I squeeze this lemon out but I do it all for you. There we go. Yes, indeed. Had to get some special tools for this episode in case it is our ultimate Thanksgiving gathering. Wanted to go all out. This is a baste injector. It's kind of a basting gun combined with this rather intimidating hypodermic. I'm going to take that and fill it up with my butter mix that we just made. Now you see it's getting sucked up now into the stem. Beautiful. We're going to transfer this over and inject it at some choice points on our gator, just like that. There we go. There's some. get little bits under there, under the skin. At least in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. There we go, that looks like an injection, like a little Twinkie. And just in all the, all the places that you might like to snack on a chicken, just get that good juice 
under the skin there as best you can. Actually, this guy is devoid of skin, so just under that, under that top layer of meat. And we've got plenty to go around, so you don't need to skimp. You want them nice and buttery to hide the taste of what you're eating. No, actually, gator meat is supposed to be quite tasty. I say somewhere between chicken and fish. And we're going to try for a little further towards the towards the chicken side. Hide the fishiness. Smells really good. Got that Cajun seasoning and butter. Garlic and butter together. Longtime fans of the show will know that garlic and butter together make anything taste good, especially when we made escargot, which to date may be our tastiest dish. We'll see if the gator tops it. We have a lot of our sauce still left, so we're just gonna keep doing this until we get through our lump of butter and get him nice and saturated. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second through the magic of time lapse, but you basically just keep stabbing and squirting. It's very carnal. We're just going to keep at it. We're going to keep injecting it with the butter, making this beautiful masterpiece. I'm going to show you what that looks like once it's all lathered up. If you remember all the way back to our very first Thanksgiving episode at the end of 2013, we gave a chicken a butter body massage. And time is a circle. History repeats itself. Here we are with perhaps a more bizarre dish, but the same method. Get it saturated with butter and it's going to taste good. If you take one thing from Gauntley's years of culinary experience, let it be that. You may notice when you get your gator that the head is kind of loose. I've heard tell that it can uh, come off pretty easily in the cooking process, so we're not going to sweat it if it does. We're going to take the Bob Ross approach. So I think we found the secret. We're almost done with the butter, but I wanted to share this with you. Cooks at home. We heated it up again, so it made it extra liquidy. And now it's actually pumping. There we go, a nice little rivulet of butter all over, all under. You can just see it spurting there. Jet some in right here. All the way down, you want it to have that nice golden hue. Just Make it really greasy and fatty, because this is comfort food. Thanksgiving time, you're storing up fat for the winter. You're around people you don't need to impress, because they already know everything about you. And that's the name of the game. I think we're just about ready, but I wanted to get you a little bit more of that footage of the baste injector working like it's supposed to with that nice swelling, that nice tumescence as we fill the gator turgid with our spice mix. As the puppet said in our none too subtle saw tribute episode, eight years in this crypt and what have we done? We've made a monstrosity here. Creature of the swamp, just slathered in dairy fat and spices to be consumed by a gaggle of ghouls. Next thing that we're gonna do is cover it over with some olive oil, just to get it sticky all over. It probably is already from this butter. And then we're going to use that coating to make a Texas dry rub stick to it because we're going to go kind of barbecue style. We've got a mix of flavors here. There's Cajun, there is 
barbecue, Texas flavor, and hopefully all that mixed together is going to make a fine concoction that's going to taste about as good as anything we ever have on this show. And uh, it'll hopefully make our guests happy. So, let me show you that now. The olive oil and barbecue dry rub stage. And the idea is that we're going to rub it down with this stuff to just make it nice and sticky and slick so that our barbecue rub has something to adhere to. This stuff comes cross country and it's pretty well frozen. So you're going to want to let it thaw in the refrigerator for more than a day. Upwards of 24 hours, maybe even on towards two days because it's still pretty stiff. You see he's coiled up here. But he's about to get a lot warmer because we are not too far from the stage where he's going to get cooked and make a beautiful Thanksgiving meal for our friends. Here I have some barbecue rub. I picked the sweet and smoky variety. Should hopefully complement all the flavors that are in there so far. There are a lot of different taste profiles. Hopefully they all combine with our gator meat to produce a memorable but overall positive experience for our guests. Coating all over. We're gonna kind of add to our body massage here. I'm not using this rub for anything else, so I'm just gonna get it all over my gator. Down, tip to his tail. All over there. And then true to its name, we are going to rub, rub our gator. Get all that seasoning, coating it nicely. And just adhere a good flavor to every inch of that thing, down to the claws. He's got a really meaty neck. He's got a big, got like a whole filet right there in his neck. He's finally starting to thaw. He's got some nice juicy meat. I think there's gonna be plenty to go around. See, there's my, there's my hand. You could normally, imagine you had a ham steak, you know, that much meat is gonna make a good lunch. Uh, so 16 pounds, even if they are very avid eaters and gauntlet guests rarely are, I think this is gonna see us through for our surprisingly large brunch Thanksgiving soiree tomorrow. We've got like eight people coming, which breaks the scale as far as how many people have been coming to Gauntly episodes lately. So I'm gonna try to set a nice table. We've wrapped our big buddy all up in plastic wrap here. Dexter style. Now he's gonna take a nap in the fridge for a while. At least three hours to let all those flavors and juices seep in through the meat. But we're gonna turn in for the night. Let it soak in there about five hours. And then, maybe after a bit more of our movie, we'll see you again. The most improbable event of the 20th century occurred in Havana, Cuba. The revolutionary victors marched in and the national complexion changed completely. They had been liberated. The survivors of the old regime escaped as best they could, taking with them only a few meager effects, such as the Cuban treasury and other art objects. It wasn't always easy to smuggle a loot out of Cuba, and so secret meetings were being held all over the island. This story of robbery, double cross, and murder begins with just such a meeting. I am. Who are you? Never mind who I am. It's the mission that counts. Let's get on with it. 
As an American gambler and gangster, you're above suspicion. Of course, you know that our government has been overthrown. You know, I heard that. Shut up. But not for long. We'll be back. And if you think you're seeing executions now, oh boy. Bravo. Bravissimo. Uh, but of course, in order to uh, finance a great counter-revolution, it has been necessary for us to uh, steal the Cuban treasure. Oh, Rob. Shut up. Let us proceed. You're going to lose your casino, so you'll be leaving Cuba anyway. You have a big yacht, and you can leave any time you wish, such as immediately. Therefore, I'm going to entrust you a solemn trust. Here we have one-fourth of the Cuban treasure. Your group, General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, and a squad of men will proceed to Ciudad Trujillo. There you'll wait for us to contact you and relieve you of the money, one-fifth of which will be paid to you. Did you understand? I get the whole picture. Now you do the rest. Señores? General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, Señor Renzo Capetto, y... Uh... My name's Happy Jack Monahan. Glad to meet you, Jen. Mis buenos amigos americanos, nos cabe el honor de preservar el honor del honor cubano. En un solemne acto de confianza han confiado en nuestras confiables manos ese botín con el cual reconstruiremos todo lo que Castro piensa construir. Yo os saludo. And now, the gold. You had better get into the car. The general doesn't know any English, Senor Capetto. I'll be his translator for you. Bueno? Bueno. Bueno. Metan al auto. Now it's time to go. Adios. Adios. I'll see you later, huh? No. The first move in the great conspiracy had been made. The Cuban treasury was now in the gentle hands of Renzo Capetto, the most trustworthy man ever to be deported from Sicily. They thought they were smart. But little did they know that I, Sparks Moran, was an American agent. Luckily, I had been able to work my way into the crew by posing as a notorious gum machine burglar from Chicago. My real name is XK-150. Hey, you. Come on down here and help with this. How'd it go, Booksy? We had a hairy little chase, but we got the stuff. Crazy. Hey, Colonel Grande, you can bring your men aboard. What happens with all that mob? I don't know. I thought we'd just have an officer or two, but it looks like we're going to have a little difficulty. You think of a way to remove them and grab that loot? Because you're my big, strong. Swinging brain. You're sweet, baby. Hi, sis. Hi, baby doll. Did they scare you? Ah, uh, just a little. Oh. All right, boys. Get ready to go. Pete, take the wheel. Jack, you and uh, Clark's uh, Sparks, get ready to cast off. Well, well, this 
This is a beautiful night for sailing. And so we left Cuba forever, sailing into the most astounding adventure to be inflicted upon man. And what a group we were. The big cheese was Renzo Capetto, alias Capo Rosetto, alias Rado Pizzetti, alias Zeppo Staccato, alias Shirley Lamour. At 15, he served his first stretch for rolling a drunk in the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria, New Year's Eve, 1934. In 1940, he was involved in an unsuccessful attempt to nominate Benito Mussolini for the Republican ticket. During the war, he was rejected by the Navy, Marines, and the SS. Now deported, he has retained his contacts with the syndicate and is still regarded as a dangerous character. Mary Bell Monahan, alias Mary Monahan Bell, alias Bell Mary Monahan, alias Monahan Mary Bell. They say she was a gun mall just because Lucky Luciano gave her a Rolls Royce every Christmas. And they can't really prove that she sneaked into the Hollywood Bowl with a Tommy gun and rubbed out the convention of police chiefs in 1956. Oh, I know that she got nailed cold when she was pushing heroin in the laundry room at Boys Town. But I'm willing to give anyone the benefit of the doubt especially when she's as crazy looking as Mary Bell. This is Happy Jack Monahan, so called because he developed a muscle spasm in his cheeks from watching too many Humphrey Bogart pictures. Happy Jack's record is brief, his only crimes having been committed after his sister, Mary Bell, talked Renzo into giving him a job. Up until that time, Happy Jack had been a tennis bum, sleeping under the bleachers at Forest Hills and mooching nickels in the BMT subway. Since taking up with Renzo, he has become a well-known dice loader and murderer. The most obscure member of the Dark Quartet is Pete Peterson, Jr., son of Pete Peterson, Sr., famed vaudeville bird mimic. Pete, Jr. inherited his father's talent for animal imitations, but unfortunately blew his brain out of whack while imitating a whooping crane at the Elks Convention picnic in Oshkosh in 1942. Since then, anyone has been able to convince Pete of anything. Renzo found him struggling along as a pickpocket at Jones Beach and took him with him in his exile. Since then, he has been Renzo's faithful servant, shining his shoes and rubbing out his enemies. In return, Renzo permits him to imitate any animal that comes into his head. That, for instance, was the mating call of the Himalayan yak. There they are. My shipmates. I didn't know where they were taking those unsuspecting Cubans, but I knew they were taken. And so, with grim faces, we set our helm against the perilous future. Okay, now before I begin, does anyone anything to say? Pete? Mm. How about you, Jack? What do you think we should do? You up? Oh, now, honey, is that any way for Mary Bell's big man to talk? Now, look. We've got to get rid of at least half of these Cubans without making the rest of them suspicious. There used to be a Cuban fisherman by the name of Hemingway. He got hooked on a sea monster in these waters a couple of years ago, and he was dragged for miles. Got a lot of publicity. We're going to show these boys the greatest sea monster they ever saw in their lives. Jack, in my trunk, there's some garden rakes used for weeding tomatoes. You get them and, and sharpen them like scalpers. Pete, you mix up a mess of olive oil and green ink and snag some seaweed from over the side. Now, Jack, what are you going to do? Sharpen up the garden rakes? Good boy. Pete, how about you? Does he have to do that? All right, Jack, do that. Life together, haven't we, baby? Mm, you know it, folks. 
Winters in Tijuana, summers in Cicero. Remember that wonderful trip we took to Monte Carlo? You mean at the time we heisted all those hundred dollar chips? Sure. I'll admit, I couldn't really hear anything through that door, but I was sure they were up to no good. I knew it was up to me to stop them. Now we're off again to parts unknown. It's like a second honeymoon. You know something? We ought to get married. Now don't be a drag, baby. <laughs> How much Jack do you think's in that strong arm? There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. What are we gonna do with all of it? I don't know. I always wanted to open up a home for the aged hoodlums. Baby, you got a heart as big as all outdoors. A government agent lives in constant peril. I devised my undetectable radio set using simulated hot dogs for knobs and tubes inside of dill pickles while watching a number of sewer workmen during lunch hour. It comes in mighty handy, believe you me. One little slip and I could be headed for Davy Jones' locker. Hello, Havana. This is Agent XK-150. Over. I'm making my first official report. So far, not too much has happened, but I'm anticipating. Renzo Capetto and his gang are on board as suspected. I am with them. I will call you again soon, one of these days. This is Agent XK-150, signing off. Hey, what's happening? Just having a bite. Gee, that looks good. Do you mind if I join you? The general says, good morning, you gorgeous, beautiful creature. Would you ask the general to remove himself from my presence? Uh, ella dice que muy buenos días para usted, mi general. Usted para mí es como una flor del mar, como un ángel de Neptuno sonriéndole al mundo. The general says you are a, um, you are a golden angel flower singing. Would you tell the general that I feel that he'd be most at home, barbecuing slowly over a hot spit? Um, ella dice que mi general es un hombre muy digno y de gran empuje. You must be a glutton for punishment. Oh. <coughs> oh, now, what do you want? You're too good for this life. You're young and you're innocent. You should get out. All we get is good. Are you unwell? The getting is great. You're a victim of circumstance. I try. I do try. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Now, what is your story? Oh, well, you see, I'm beyond help, but you're not. You can find a clean young man to marry and... I haven't got the time. But I can help you marry, Belle. You can turn blue. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. I die. That's a comforting alternative.
A secret agent should never sleep. But there I was, dreaming of Mom's apple pie, while up on deck, Renzo and his cutthroats were taking the first step, killing an innocent Cuban and pretending some imaginary monster did it just so they would be panicked into changing course so that Renzo could steer them to his own picked destination. What none of us knew was that the monster invented by Renzo had already been invented by somebody else. By a couple of other monsters, I guess. aquí anoche. Dos de vuestros compañeros han sido cobardemente asesinados. Debemos encontrar al que cometió este cobarde asesinato para que esto no vuelva a suceder. What did he say? The general says what happened. Here, yeah, if you'd like to hear. Please go ahead. Well, I don't think it was anything human that killed your soldier. I've seen the tracks and the claw wounds on their body. Now, in my studied opinion, those soldiers were attacked by some weird creature from the sea. It came in, did your boys in, and vanished again. <laughs> it was so funny. That creature, how silly. Did you really think it is? <laughs> what is la gracia? Este estúpido gringo cree que Alejandro lo mató un monstruo que salió de... ¡Silencio! Este estúpido gringo tiene razón. Un anfibio desconocido de aguas desconocidas. Pure, Colonel. Bueno, el uh, general dice... Uh, ¡Estás right. It ¡Es el monstruo! Estas aguas son muy peligrosas. Debemos trazar una nueva ruta. The general says these waters are very dangerous, so we must plot a new course. Ve de vuelta a la derecha. Ya. De frente, marcha. Catch that? Our brave General Tostado didn't miss an excuse to blow the trip and change course. You think he's got a glint in his eye? Pure gold. Maybe one won't have to knock them all off. Oh. You boys are getting careless. I told you to kill one, not two. So what's that? I can't just count? Okay, Pete. Now, uh, take the wheel. Well, gee, I, I, I thought it was only one. Well, I can't figure this out. So we were going somewhere I didn't know. Washington didn't know. Renzo didn't know. We all had to find out. Now, oh, gentlemen, I think we ought to make our decision. Skull! Now, has anybody got an idea? About what? About where we're going. I thought it was to Ciudad Trujillo we were going. Oh, no, no. That's been changed. Well, General Tostado thinks we ought to change course in order to escape the monster. Eh, por fin, ¿dónde vamos, General? Caracas, Venezuela. No. Oh, no, no. I think we ought to go hey, to... Let's go to India. I've always wanted to see a second like Actually, I think we ought to go to Cannes. It really swings this time of the year. Yeah, will you listen? So strange, my friends. I always had a secret desire. I always wanted to go to Bali, you know? Bali? Bali! Bali! Not 
going to Bali. Caracas, Venezuela. No. Please tell the general that I am convinced we ought to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Él dice que está convencido el único sitio puede ir es a San Juan de Puerto Rico. This is Agent XK-150 calling Agent XK-120 via 190SL. Come in, Havana. Now, the first thing we've got to think about is to escape this pinky monster. Now, if you take a look at the chart, you'll notice there's a lot of deep water just north of Puerto Rico. Too deep for the monster to live in. Well, how do you know he can't live in deep water? Because of his feet. He's a walker and he's got to stay at the bottom. All right, stupid? Right, stupid. Now, when we get to Puerto Rico, we'll take the strong box ashore. Now, as an American, I won't be noticed. I'll take a plane up to Ciudad Trajillo. Take the box with me. I can say unequivocally, without the slightest qualm of doubt, that this gang is heading for Bali. I think the government should watch for us at the Panama Canal. Over. Que no perderé de vista de Santa. The general says it's all right. We may go to Puerto Rico. But he won't keep the strong box out of his sight. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> I think I smell land. Are we almost there? Oh, about six or eight hours. Another lucky shooter. Pause the point. Pause. You're ravishing. You're sick. Listen, I have a plan. As soon as we get there, we'll wait for night. And when Renzo isn't looking, we'll jump off and swim for shore through shark-infested water so no one will follow us. Then we'll steal a sailing dinghy and head for Brazil. How do you like it? I think it's grand. You ought to do it. Well, I'm, I meant you, too. Honey, I wouldn't ride on the same bus with you. Now, Pete, I want you to listen carefully. On the north coast of the Big Island, there's a teeny speck of land called La Isla del Borracho, named after one of Columbus's lieutenants. It should be deserted by now. We ought to be able to land there, huh? Good. Now, there's a reef around the island and a very narrow opening which we have to go through. I am going to run this yacht on the rocks right at the entrance. Now, during the panic, we'll take the strong box, load it on a skiff, and head for shore. Now, Pete, when we get over 30 feet of water, I'll give you a signal. And then I want you to capsize the boat. You understand? Later, Pete, we'll come back and dive for it. You understand everything? Sure. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll hit the rocks. And then we put the box in the skiff, uh -huh. and then we dump it over 30 feet of water so we can come back and get it. And that's because it's filled with nitroglycerin. It shouldn't be on board anyway. Isle of Morocco. Look at the reefs. Demented. My lunchbox. Oh, what a short memory. Open the door, open! Behind the door! 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 Behind the door!
You go down and get the strong box out of the safe. Go on. It's all right. Be calm, everybody. The boat's insured. Everything went according to plan. The Renzos and the monsters. The gator has been stewing in its own juices overnight. For about five hours. And this is the result. Now we're going to prepare a baste before it goes into the oven. I've got half a cup of olive oil here and we are going to use this as the base for the marinade that we're going to baste over top of the alligator. We're going to add a large pinch of garlic salt again Shake it in there. Like that. And a lot of Cajun seasoning. That was definitely popular in the recipe that we watched. A little bit of a new ingredient, some liquid smoke. I chose the mesquite variety. There we go. And the juice of another lemon. You're going to save these lemon peels and use them to kind of dress our alligator for the first half hour that he cooks. It'll help seal in some moisture add some zest, and then after they're all dry, we'll take them out. Let's take a look at our flavor injector from last night. Now, Gauntlet made a clever find here. Watch this. Take off that needle. Oh, it's a baster. No, just a regular baster. And then, pop this over the top. Got these flexible tendrils. There it goes. And it's a basting brush, too. So, let's load that up with our sauce. And the idea is that we're going to put the oven on at 250. And we are going to cook it at that temperature until the alligator meat reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And once it reaches that 145 degree mark, we're gonna raise the temperature up to 300 degrees until the temperature of the meat reaches 165 degrees. Uh, ours clocked in at about 16 pounds, probably cook at about four hours. Every half hour along the way, we're gonna pull it out, we're gonna baste it, and we'll show you what that looks like in the oven in a minute. But first, let's baste it for our premiere run. Fill up our baster there. We'll put our brush head on there. There we go. Let's just brush it on like that. Just like that.
we've wrapped a rack of the oven in aluminum foil and we're going to just use the rack itself as an impromptu roasting pan because our big boy up top the stove there is so large and the oven is heating up right now to 250 degrees as gracefully as possible I'm going to try to transfer it from here to our baking tray that we just prepared just really try to get the whole thing here let's get up close and personal with our meat just like that and tucked, tucked on there comfortably. Basically like that. So there he goes, all ready for the big heat. Actually, it's pretty low heat, 250 degrees that he's heading into now. We're just gonna slide that up into the oven and close the door. What's that? Here we go. Low, low, low your boat gently up the creek. Merrily, 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 I'm going to be sick. You know, this reminds me of one time on Lake Minnetonka. Louise Schmidt and I were paddling along, when what do you think happened? General says you have your order as soon as he can estimate the situation. Well, you can tell El General Gotta be through giving orders around here. Now look, you men have no money and you have no guns and you're on U.S. soil. That's all right, I'm on your side. Pete, I want you to search the island, see if anybody lives here. Jack, you take one of the lifeboats and row to shore. Make your way to San Juan and rent us a fishing boat and plenty of diving gear. Uh-huh. Come on, boys. Oh, Colonel, you see if you can get your men to build us a lean-to or something to keep the rain off. Atención. De frente. Marche. necessary, baby. Why? Well, the way I figure it, these Cubans aren't very much at diving. But Jack, Pete, and I are all pretty good spear fishermen. We'll go down, find the strong box, and hide it in a hole in the reef. After that, we'll tell the Cubans that it's no use. Give up. It'll be safe there for months, even years, until we're ready to come back and get it. You like it? Booksy, sometimes you are so smart you make me sick.
dinero ahí, coño. Pete, aren't you going to introduce me to the lady? Isn't she beautiful, Renzo? <laughs> Very lovely. Where did you meet? Oh, no. That must mean they're in love. <laughs> I wish you many happy returns of the day. Oh, isn't that a ring you're wearing, Mr. Porcina Perez? It's a wedding ring. Hello. <laughs> Get the equipment. All about 20 bottles, 10 regulars, masks, beer guns, the works. Overdid it as usual. Well, okay, we're going to start diving this afternoon. I brought something else on with me, too. No, porque pongan todo eso ahí otra vez. Vamos a muy. Carmelita, I'd like you to meet Renzo Capetta, my sister Mary Bell, Mr. Pete Peterson, and, well, I don't know who the large woman with him is. What's well, up, Perez? Hi. Hello, everybody. You found this woman in San Juan? Well, she was living in a sort of sorority house down by the docks. She's awful friendly. Why don't you come on with me, honey? I'll show you our sorority house. Huh? Capero, I have the honor to report that my men will be ready in one hour. Ready for what? To dive to the Strandbox. You mean your men are divers? Yes. They are Cuban Army frogmen. Olé. I had the situation well in hand. Mary Bell was weakening, as I'm sure you've noticed. Then she came into my life. I didn't see her coming, but somehow I sensed her presence and knew that my life was changed forever. Hello. Who are you? Hermanita Rodrigo. Sparks Moran. As a trained espionage agent, I could tell that she was attracted to me. But I wanted Maribel. And Maribel wanted Renzo. And Renzo wanted the gold. Idiot! Let's keep this thing firm. You all right? Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. All right, we're ready. Let's just keep it on. I don't know, but I'm ready. Vamos from there, los cubanos. A sumer hitnos. A sumer hitnos. The search for the strong box had begun, but the sea was cluttered up with Cubans, dispersed by General Tostada to search independently. All those Cubans alone in the deeps. This was a chance for Renzo to again become the sea monster. A lonely Cuban had found one of the many wrecks on the bottom. Renzo had found the lonely Cuban.
attack was cleanly executed. The victim was dead. The killers delighted, but not satisfied. Renzo must have another quart of Latin blood. We waited, sensing the dangers below. While the unholy three sought new prey. It didn't take them long to find it. No, it was a monster. What do you mean a monster? A real, live, honest-to-goodness monster with claws and everything. Oh, you're nuts. Hold this way. Carmelita, it's too dangerous for you here. Let's run away and live a little. No, no, I'm in love with the Sparks. Sparks Moran? Let's see. Well, how can you be in love with him? He's an idiot. You ought to be in love with me. No, I'm in love with him. And I don't care if he'll never see you again. Oh, if I'd only pay my life insurance premium, I'd kill myself. Oh, no, no, no. Don't kid you. Oh, why well, now? No, you come with me. I'll show you. Come with me to the jungle. You seen one jungle, you seen them all. You come with me, you see and you like. Hello, Carl. Senor, I'm very much afraid of this monster. Well, let's just pick up and go home. No, I am an officer. We will not stop until we have the scrambler. From now on, we'll dive with spear guns. Crazy. Mango! Mango! Senor Happy Chuck, uh, this girl is my daughter. Her name is Mango. Mango? Sí. Oye, me, la novia lo dejó ahora por un idiota y el pobrecito, tú sabes, quería matar. Pero yo le dije que no lo hiciera, que él necesitaba una persona que lo alegrara. Uh, I was telling her what that no good of Carmelita do to you. I was telling her to cheat you up. Oh, gee, thanks, Porcina. But it really wasn't necessary. Oh, you don't like mango? Oh, yeah, I, I like it. Siento mucho lo que le ha pasado, señor. Es algo que le pasa a todo el mundo con mucha frecuencia. Es lo mejor. She no speak good English, señor. Oh, well, I don't think that's going to matter at all. Okay. Uh, I'm going back now. Mr. Pete Peterson Jr. He is waiting for me now. Well, adios, pussy. Adios. Are you all right, Porcina? Oh, I'm all right, my hero. <laughs> hey, who was happy, Jack? Oh, come on. I take you to them. Them? Yes. Tú eres muy dulce, aunque un poco estúpido. Oh, I don't know what you said, Mango. But it sure was wonderful. Y nadie quiere que yo sea agradable con los extranjeros. Es como una especie de bienvenida para los turistas. I feel the same way, Mango. I never felt like this in my whole life. A ella le gusta que yo los entusiasme para poder venderles sombreros de palma de coco y sandalias. 
Oh, I know, Mango. I know. Well, here come Pete and Porcina. <laughs> Se parecen a los premios más baratos en una galería de tiro. Hi, Jack. Who's your friend? Well, this is Mango Perez, Porcina's daughter. Gee! She's almost as pretty as her mother. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but can't she do imitations? Well, I don't know. And I don't care, because I love her. Gosh, you're gonna marry her? Yeah, well, why not? Why not? If you marry Mango. And I marry Porcino. I'll be your father. Woo! What about boy called Zach? Oh, we cannot talk here. We cannot talk. My mushu gonna talk you. He may be trouble. Yeah. I just had a fight with him. You know, Pete, I'm getting tired of all this running around. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to marry Mango and settle down here. Well, I could start a tennis club. They don't have clubs. They have rackets. You know, you're right. But you know something, though? To do the same thing myself. Say, why don't we rub them all out? And this way, we can keep the strong box for ourselves? Oh, yes. Well, even Mary Bell? Oh, gee. I don't know about her. Well, she is my sister. Of course, we could keep her around to do the housekeeping. Sure. And she'll get over losing Renzo. Sure. Well, how about it? Is it a deal? Sure. Besides, they've been cheating on their income tax anyway. Ay, ya yo me estoy cansando de esta jeringonza. Vamos a nadar, ¿quién? Uh, Mango, she won't go swimming. All right, oh, let's go. Mark, Mark, where, where's Pete and the boys? They know we should be diving this afternoon. I think they're somewhere in the jungle. Está proponiendo una cosa sucia, le exige una satisfacción. What's this? What, what is this? This man's wife is playing around with Mr. Pierre. He's very angry. That's tough. Mire, lo único que puedo hacer es venderla. Yo creo que 50 dólares y una caja de caldilla está en orden. This man wants to sell you his wife for 50 dólares in a case of rum. Tell him he's nuts. Ah, uh, dice que está loco. Jen, yo no acepto esa clase de insulto a nadie. Ahora le exijo 100 dólares. Carmelita, will you talk to him? We're busy. Oh, sure. I would tell him to cut down to 20 for a fifth of gin. Gin nothing? Who wants to buy his improbable wife? Come on, General Testada, let's get going. Soldados cubanos, de nuevo a sumergirnos. Una, dos, y tres. Una, dos, y tres. Una, dos. All right, baby. Listen, you hold on to these, because I can't use them without Peter Jack to help me, huh? I'll keep them warm for you. Renzo Capetto had at last found the strong box. And the unknown partner had found Renzo Capetto.
Mango! Mango! Why'd you have to do it, Renzo? Why did I have to do what? Don't play games with me. Why'd you kill her? Jack, I swear I had nothing to do. I said don't play games. We all saw the, the same five incisions in those brown marks on that stupid toilet plunger. All right, you asked Mary, but I gave her the rakes before I went under. That won't play. You had two more in your trunk, just in case you said, remember? Yeah, I remember, but they're still there. I can't convince them, honey. Maybe you can. Sorry, honey. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go along with Jack. You think I did it? Well, what else can I think? You made that monster up out of thin air. Now, don't try to tell me it's real. I'm not that stupid. Well, I am. I always believed in it. But it's got to be real. Either that or the Cubans are trying to kill us off. I can't buy that. I don't care what you buy. From now on, we're going to die with spirits like the rest of them. We've got to get rid of the rest of those Cubans as quickly as possible. Now, we'll start tomorrow morning. With Tostado. Jack? Yeah. Pete? Possible death notwithstanding. The courageous general and two of his men dove once more into the deadly sea. But, as usual, they were not alone. Renzo waited for them to separate. One pulled away and then there were two. Tostada went on alone into the forbidding void with the killers closing in. The giant observer stood watching over a pathetic bit of cloth, all that remained of mango. At last, Tostada had found his gold in his own watery grave. The general died as all generals should. His greedy murderers let his body drift away while they congratulated each other. Happy Jack found the scrap of a dress and knew what had happened to his beloved. Suddenly. Now you've got to leave, Mary Bell, and there's no one to help you but me. Oh, Mary Bell, I love you so much I could split. Get, get on! What do you do to my man? Oh, shut up! Oh. Oh, thank you.
It was dusk. I could tell because the sun was going down. You were right, senor. All my army is finished. I know when the general died. I don't care about the fox and Mola, the monster. I don't want him to kill any more of my men. Neither do I, Colonel. I think we must go to Ciudad Trujillo in the morning. You can go anywhere you like. I'm going home. To America? America? No, I can't go back there anymore. Cicero. Oh. I got an uncle there who's been after me for years to help him stamp grapes. It's beginning to appeal to me. Mary Bell hates me. I know. But I love you. It's kind of nice having somebody love you. Why don't you try to love me? You might like it. I guess I can try. She pressed her hot Latin lips against mine. And I forgot everything but Carmelita. But our silent partner was not going to let me forget. This was it. There was but one thing a responsible, trusted representative of the United States government could do at a time like this. Get out of there. All right, Bill. Yes? Honey, I'd just like one more chance to explain. Please. All right, Brooks. It doesn't really matter. No matter where you go or what you do or whom you kill. I love you till the day I die. Mary Bell, but he was the skipper and decided to go down ahead of his ship. your whole life in a monastery? Carmelita, I love you and I, I want to marry you and take you away from all this. Mm, that I would like it, I think. Of course, we'd have to live on the salary of an American spy, which is forty-one fifty a week. I don't care. You're so strong, so intelligent. You see how you solve the whole case? You're the smartest to appeal in the whole world. I'm not really as smart as I look, Carmelita. You see, I, I have to admit that all that time, I thought Renzo and the Cubans were trying to steal that strong box. But I was wrong. The real killer was the monster. So what? You're beautiful. So I got the girl. And guess who got the gold? Okay. 
There it is at 165. Cook time came out to be right about three and a half hours, not not quite four. But that is a pretty good looking gator if I do have to say so myself. And now comes the plating up for our friends. Now, of course, I can't in good consciousness be having a gathering without taking proper social distancing precautions. Fittingly seasonal. I guess this is a Halloween mask, but you know, for Gauntly, it's Halloween all year round, even when it happens to be Thanksgiving time. Now, the guests are fit to arrive soon. We'll have to see how they are attired. We'll have to see what precautions they take but hopefully they will enjoy the reptilian repast that we've prepared. Because Gauntly is a labor of love. I like to say I do it for you, but I think you all know that I largely do it for me. And these people that you're about to meet are the ones who have helped make it happen over the last eight years. I couldn't have done it without them. And so I do hope that they have a good day courtesy of Gauntley's culinary talents, so-called. Some visitors who have joined us here before. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Tangy, yet robust. It's uh, it's well marinated, very supple. At least I'm I'm eating a drumstick here, so. <laughs> uh, I noticed I really like dark meat, and you know, as far as white meat goes, this is incredible. Just delicious, falling off the bone. Nursing mother, so I'm not really sure what the recommendations around alligator are. So I'm just playing it safe. <laughs> Good call. What about you? Delicious. We haven't spoken to you yet. <laughs> Wonderful. So where'd that alligator come from, Agret? Uh, we don't need to talk about it. My great aunt, Euphus, she hunts alligators and every once in a while throws a bone here or there, quite literally, as you've seen. So we get to partake in her, her extra, extra trappings. It's delicious. Couldn't have killed or hunted anything better myself. Tell us a little bit about what you ate here today. We had a little bit of alligator, uh, cooked up with some Cajun spices. Actually was surprisingly delicious. Uh, would try again. Kind of makes me want to eat dinosaur. I'll let you know if I find some. The only time I tried to eat alligator before was uh, in college, and I don't remember a lot of college. So uh, this, this was incredible. Uh, here was our crocodilian culinary consultant. So did it come together the way that you planned? Happy so far, yes. Good, uh, good working with you on this. And how was the taste? Better than anticipated. Agra. Godly. Th Thanksgiving number eight. What does it mean to you? It's been around for far too long. Eight Thanksgivings in the books, each one more far superior than the last. Yeah, Thanksgiving's a time to gather together, to eat weird stuff, or, uh, to remember the, the origins of, uh, of our country. When Abraham Lincoln decided to sit down with the pilgrims and the Native Americans and said, let's eat turkey. So you see here the aftermath of the massacre. Got one last chicken wing here with a claw. Mm. Another gauntly Thanksgiving has drawn to a close. This just might be our last, at least before a hiatus. 
after what I'm thinking is going to be episode 100 in August. Seven years ago, I sat in this same chair. I cooked a black chicken. That's back when we shot in standard definition on cassette tapes. A lot has changed. Time keeps ticking forward, as you can see by the movie clock on the wall. I hope you've gotten something out of joining us here on Count Gauntley's Horrors from the Public Domain. Not only this Thanksgiving, but the last seven years we've been doing this. I've enjoyed putting it together for you, just like the fine cuisine that I've prepared. Hope I've made it memorable. It certainly tastes memorable. And this year in a good way. So if you get the chance to eat an alligator, tell your friends and gather them around and share it because it's a great way to make memories. So happy Thanksgiving to you at home. Hope you're spending it with people that you love. And as we always say, pleasant nightmares. Bye guys.